Um, we were driving on the highway out here in the middle of nowhere, like desert, and Fred saw a cat that needed help. We grabbed him. <laughs> um, and so we're gonna sweet. take him to the shelter and get him help. He's pretty badly injured. You can see he's got really bad skid marks, it looks like. And I used to work at a shelter, so we were always told that people will come out to remote areas like this and dump animals that they don't want. And it kind of looks like that's what happened to this little guy. Because he's used to humans. Yeah, he was very sweet when Fred um, grabbed him and picked him up and he lets us touch him and everything, so. Look how sweet he is. So the update is this. We rushed over to the Humane Society in Parker, which is right here. And there's nobody here, so we called like every phone number. And then we finally got a hold of someone who's gonna come over and he said he'd be here in about 10 minutes. Somebody's here. Hey, little baby. Look how cute he is. Little boy. Okay, so we dropped Parker off. Um, he is looking okay. He's not panting anymore. He looks a little less overheated. They're gonna give him food and water. They said they don't have a vet in town until Monday. So I'm thinking our plan is gonna be check in on him this afternoon and tomorrow and possibly take him home after the final round on Sunday. That's what really? we're gonna do. We got a now. cat now. All right, this whole number four. We're gonna try to fit it in between the clips there on the rocks. The green is behind that big bump over there, so you could potentially drive it. You can see that's another hole over there, so it's gonna be some interesting hole. Rocks on both sides. Oh. They say that my ball actually hit the green, huh? Yeah, look at that. Oh, it's <laughs> Right there. What should I wait for tomorrow? That's pretty good. You can see the green. Of course, cool. Check out this part five. You're hitting it from back there through this valley. And then all the way down there. This is an awesome hole. And this is supposed to be a part three. We have no idea where to go, but the green is down there somewhere. <laughs> can you see it from up there? Yeah, you can see it a little bit. All right, we're heading up the mountain. All right, so I, I <laughs> climbed the mountain to try to see the green, and it's it's down there. So it's a completely blind part three. 151, he says. So we just finished the front nine and it's started to get really, really windy. We're gonna have to deal with this. It's the type of wind that like blows your hat off. Yeah, it's already for sure. Off. Obviously that, that is not what you want. Nah, get out of there, man. Don't piss him off. Underneath. They got a rattlesnake under the car. <laughs> there it is. Oh, watch out, it's coming out of it. Oh, he's rattling. I can hear it again. Oh my god. They got Please him. Please don't get there. He can't get. Oh, he just flung him. He just yeeted him into the rocks. I was making fun on it. Literally the last hole about leaving because of a snake. And we see a rattlesnake now actually inside a car and a guy using his club thrown away. Dude, if the snake would have grabbed that club a little bit, he would have literally slung it like Onto swung it on his friend. Yeah. It was the last hole we played and now we're on top of a mountain playing a par four, little dog leg left up here. Up the practice round we're heading to the casino what are your thoughts yeah it's it's a golf course that is nothing like i've ever played before it is absolutely wild there are some extremely difficult holes like hole number 17 it's a par 5 where the fairway is literally 10 yards wide so you gotta get 
through that hole and then a couple of other holes that are very tricky. Other than that, it's fairly it's short. Simple. You're gonna have a lot of wedges and the greens are actually really pure. So uh, it's gonna be a good test. We will last tomorrow. And most likely it's gonna be very windy. So it's gonna be, tomorrow is gonna be a grind and hopefully day two, the wind is gonna be a little bit less and be a little bit more scorable. Now we're heading to the casino where we're staying. We got a freaking water park in the hotel. Look at this. The river outside. Oh, this could be good. Let's see the room. And it's actually really, really nice. Look at this. And check out this view. That is super nice. Round one is today. Fred tees off in about an hour and a half. You know that we found a cat on the side of the road and took him to a shelter to get help. Um, that was yesterday morning. We went in and checked on him today and he is not doing well and hasn't received any medical attention, hasn't drank anything or eaten anything. So we decided to take it into our own hands. Fred is gonna go get ready to tee off and I'm gonna run him to a vet about 40 minutes away. And he's right back here, we just picked him up. We kidnapped him with permission. You know, he's gonna get blood work, x-ray and everything. Uh, it's gonna be very expensive, but hopefully by the time you see this video, we had a little GoFundMe and we have had a bunch of great followers reach out to us through our Instagram saying yep. we're all gonna help with the cost. So uh, we're gonna save this little guy's life. We're gonna give it all we yep. can. And uh, hopefully that good deed will help me shoot that really good score today. So it should work like that, karma, right? I think right? that's how it works, yeah. yeah. Okay, I just picked Parker up from the vet. He is a little disheveled. Can you see him? Yep. He's a little bit sad and a little bit uncomfortable, but he's on pain meds. They ran x-rays, blood work. He had no internal bleeding and no broken bones, which is amazing. My heart literally skipped a beat in there because when she read the total bill, she said 10,000 first, not 1,000, and I literally almost dropped to the floor. But it was all good. The GoFundMe covered everything. Thank you guys so much. I was panicking. Fred was a little bit nervous too because we basically just wrote our rent check to take care of this cat and you guys came in so, so clutch. So Parker is going to be okay. We're on 17. Um, we started this hole at 357. It is now 459. It's taken us an hour to get our balls on the green because there was a four group weight up there. Fun. Uh, terrible for a while. That was the slowest round in my life. After six and a half hours, we still haven't finished, and now it's dark. The boys, Hannah, it's nice. We deserved it this after uh, absolute shocker over there. Picking up some stuff for Parker. We have a little bed, a kennel he can be in, litter, bulbs, food, everything. I'm back in the hotel after the first round that we did not finish in time. We have two holes left. It's a golf course that is very, very difficult. And a lot of amateurs are playing in this field too. So it's both pros and amateurs playing on a really difficult golf course in windy conditions. So we got some stuff for Parker. Parker is feeling great. Uh, the vet said there's no issues with him. And that's the greatest news. I'm two over with two holes to go for the first round, which is not great, but hopefully I can finish off that round tomorrow pretty good. We're teeing off at 7 and then my second round tee time is at 8.20. So we didn't get that much content out of today's round because Hannah took Parker to the vet and then got to get him back and so on. But tomorrow you're going to see more from, from me playing in the tournament. So get ready for tomorrow. It's going to be a long day. This is where you shit, okay? Nowhere else, please. <laughs> We're building Parker's new house. Or in the hotel room in this little thing. Yep. We got Parker this little kennel. He doesn't like it, he wants to come out and get pets, but he's gonna have to stay here, especially when we're playing some golf here the next couple of days before he gets to go home. He's got a big bed in there, litter box, Water food, but yeah, but he, hates he hates it. 